um, but to go between Tanzania and Nigeria, you need, you need somebody to bear some counterparty risk that the ledgers both move and are adjusted at the same time. And usually it's a bank that is in both countries. You could use blockchain, but you, the current thinking is you need a bridge currency in between. And that bridge could be a stable value that's, that's you know, backed by the US dollar or the euro. It could be a currency even like uh, Ripple has an alternative. It's just piloted in May, so it's... There was a gentleman in Florida that put up citrus groves and started to sell them. And the Supreme Court had to decide what is an investment contract because an investment contract is a security. This four-part test, in my mind, suggests that most, maybe not all, but most initial coin offerings are securities because they're investment contracts where there is an exchange of money, there's a common enterprise, you're relying on somebody else's expertise for profits. And this is why I've earlier this year said, I think that most of them are. I think Ether, when it was done in 2014, would pass this test. When I say pass, it means it's a security. Now, subsequently, the SEC has said by 2018, it's decentralized enough. And they've sort of said, you know, we'll let it go the other way. But whether it's Ripple or EOS or others that have done big initial coin offerings, when you think about these four things, they're probably there. But again, it's less than a quarter of the market. So this is an important debate, but it's not the whole debate. Joseph Brunsfest says any other result creates a competitive imbalance that cannot be rationalized with reference to fair enforcement of the federal securities laws. What's he saying? He's saying if you do this, you're giving Ether and Bitcoin an unfair advantage. That's what he's saying. And how do we know that that's true? Remember the video? It's on Crypto Law, the video library, Joseph Lubin, not Joseph Grunfest, Joe Lubin. What's he say after he gets the Ether free pass? He says, hey, all other altcoins are going to be spectacularly disadvantaged. Ether has the advantage. Lubin bragged about what Joseph Grunfest was warning, he's bragging about it. What does this new re ruling in this commentary mean for Ethereum going forward? What do you think is gonna happen next other than the massive price spike that we're seeing happening like, as we speak? Sure, so um, the implications for Ether itself are that it can continue to trade freely. Uh, you and I can trade it here. Uh, it can trade on decentralized exchanges. It can trade on centralized exchanges that are not specifically uh, registered to trade securities. Uh, so essentially no disruption. What do you think's gonna happen to Ripple with this new uh, ruling? Uh, I don't know the answer to that. I, I wasn't able to read through um, um, Bill's entire um, speech and I, okay. I wasn't here. Uh, I don't know if he rep, uh, if he uh, uh, spoke about XRPs at all. Um, he didn't specifically he, mention he did anything not. about it. So that's interesting. Oh. Ripple. Ripple? Overvalued oh. or undervalued? Oh, I don't want to say anything mean about them. Uh, you don't have to. Um, massively overvalued. Okay. Take a look at this. Fiat money is going digital. CBDCs can offer increased transaction speed and reduced fees. Reduced risk via decentralized infrastructure, accelerated payments, plus the ability to redeploy capital faster, and financially inclusive payment rails. Another one from W. Kahneman. Listen to this, guys. An interesting issue around Bhutan's work with Ripple on a CBDC. The UN has encouraged Bhutan to develop a domestic bond market and create a digital domestic liquidity management framework. To what degree is Ripple a part of the discussion? Now, if you remember from a while back, the Central Bank of Bhutan partnered with Ripple. Hey guys, I'm here to share a few very exciting updates first. But before that, let me take a stab at presenting to you guys this announcement from the makers of the Gold Secure Currency, an innovative cryptocurrency that combines all of cryptocurrency's best elements into one secured coin. GSX combines use cases of XRP, Cardano, and many of the top 10 decentralized assets into a single investment. 
So this crypto with an asset backing of a secured asset trust currently estimated to be worth over $7 billion can facilitate growth like a traditional cryptocurrency just announced its biggest mining updates so far. In Zimbabwe, the first is about 100 miles north of the capital, Harare. The second is close to a town called Mar. The gold secured currency's parent company has thousands of acres across southern Africa with two huge claims in Zimbabwe. The first is situated near the mineral-rich suburbs of Makaha, with a significant gold reef that will allow for much easier mining and much more substantial amounts of materials to be mined daily. The other land claim consists of 2,500 acres close to the town of Kuroi. Uh, small samples have been taken for testing and results have confirmed the presence of gold and copper as well as other minerals in the claim. We have already filed all the second, near Chinhoi, is estimated to have a landmass of around 2,500 acres of land rich in minerals, gold, copper, and other valuable metals. Mining will commence in no time at all. In addition, the firm is investigating other claims that have potentially large deposits of materials used in lithium battery manufacturing. Because it would allow us to mine open casts, which would essentially allow us to extract substantially more uh, material per hour than mining traditionally with a shaft. GSX is also progressing on a separate project in Zambia that will incorporate a prominent local player and significantly add more value to GSX. The next few months will be some of the most exciting months for GSX. Why do I think so? Because right now, the price is significantly low, hence presents a very low-risk buy-in. And these projects are going to go a long way to get the value of GSX up to the dollar mark in no time. So, guys, GSX has huge investment potential. Looking to get your hands on some? Well, for more information, the link to the company's website and other valuable information will be in the description. Yes, sucker! Now, the key to making money in a situation like this is to position yourself now before the settlement. Because by the time you read about it in the Wall Street Journal, it's already too late. For now, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. sector. Central banks already issue digital currencies. It's called bank reserves. Ether, when it was done in 2014, would pass this test. When I say pass, it means it's a security. Ethereum is quite big. Uh, a, 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 a currency called Ripple that you might hear in the banking sector. The bank. So these were speeches from the present SEC chair back in the day, from when he was the chairman of the CFTC in 2014 during Barack Obama's time in office, up until his days as a professor on blockchain technology at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Sloan School of Management. The current SEC chair, Gary Gensler, confirmed on multiple occasions, as we can see in these videos, that XRP is a currency, and that Ethereum is indeed a security, since it had participated in an initial coin offering prior to its launch. Remember, XRP never participated in an initial coin offering. If it had, then maybe we could talk about classifying it as securities offerings. So it doesn't fall under the purview of the Howey test, yet the SEC keeps taunting Ripple's XRP with the moniker of a security, which rightfully befits the Ether token. Now listen to this, people. This is why I've earlier this year said, I think that most of them are. I think Ether, when it was done in 2014, would pass this test. When I say pass, it means it's a security. Now, subsequently, the SEC has said by 2018, it's decentralized enough and they've sort of said, you know, we'll let it go the other way. But whether it's Ripple or EOS or others that have done big initial coin offerings, when you think about these four things, they're probably there. So Hugo was asked about uh, the token XRP and whether I think it's a non-compliant security. I've spoken publicly. Yes, I do think it's a non-compliant security. But a couple of weeks into his selection by President Joe Biden's government as the SEC's chair, this video is from January. Gary Gensler, the shape-changing SEC chair, all of a sudden became a little more hostile and started to follow the words of his predecessor in the SEC, Jake Layton, and that of Director of Corporation Finance, William Hinman, whose famous speech would not only grant XRP a flawless victory in this lawsuit, but also shrinks the SEC's power of enforcement in the future. Take a look at this, guys. This self-righteous and once humble Gary Gensler all of a sudden became a fierce wolf. Gary Gensler, chief clown at the SEC, back in August 2021. Here's what he had to say back then. Now, over the years, the SEC has brought dozens of cases, many of them during my predecessor's uh, time. I've only been here three months. And yet, having brought dozens of cases, we haven't lost. 
What other term befits the saying wolf in sheep's clothing, other than Mr. Gensler's many different personas? Attorney Lewis Cohen, who helped shape the luminous Gillibrand crypto bill, states that the SEC already acknowledged that XRP was not a security, despite what Gary Gensler says now. Also gives a nod to Attorney John Deaton. So you say it so clearly as if it's very well established that tokens like ETH and Aave or whatever these other assets are, are clearly not securities. But the chair of the SEC, Gary Gensler, has made some noise in the other direction. And he doesn't, I think, view these things as so clear cut. So what makes you so certain? And how would you respond to some of his statements where he seems to think that actually the vast majority of digital assets are securities? Sure. We we have a long promised paper. If you followed me on Twitter, you know, um, uh, we analyzed all 259, I believe it is, appellate cases involving the Howey test uh, since its inception, every single one of the investment contract cases. And based on that in-depth longitudinal review, you know, I can say with confidence that there's nothing in the case law that supports the idea that an asset that's recognized as not a security should be hypothetically treated as security when it's traded between people who are not otherwise involved in the transaction. You know, like you and me buying buying assets on on, on Gemini or just trading amongst ourselves or using a, a decentralized exchange. Moreover, we have the SEC's own words. You may be familiar if you follow the whole Ripple saga that a group of disgruntled XRP holders... Now to even more intriguing news about XRP, as this has been one of the most shocking to me in the past couple of days. These have been happening over the last couple of days. This one here says, watch this. That's the only thing Gary still cares about. His bank executive friends who whine about customers pulling their money out and investing in decentralized finance. It's not the investor's desire to be protected by Gary. It's the bank's desire to have Gary protecting them. Attorney John Dean replied to that tweet with this. This really does sum up Gary Gensler's problem with crypto. And it's in his own words. I can envision him listening to the Jamie Diamonds of the world shaking his head in disgust and thinking, we have to stop people from taking money out of the bank. This indicates why the entrepreneur and lawyer, John Deaton, filed a letter requesting the judge in the Ripple vs. SEC lawsuit to permit him and over 67,000 XRP holders, who've been affected by the SEC's ill-conceived lawsuit, to file for an amicus brief. Now, going through that footage made by this Twitter user, Sento Sumosaba, how the SEC has been able to stall XRP and the growth of the entire cryptocurrency industry, especially that of the United States, through its lawsuits. But most importantly, we could clearly see how past and present SEC officials made erratic discernments and assertions in recording regarding what asset is a security and which is not. But more recently, Gary Gensler is now seen to be making newer assumptions regarding XRP, which he deemed not a security, and instead deeming Ethereum, which he had previously considered a currency, a security. All this seems like they're constantly going against their sworn oaths to protect and uphold investors' interests at all costs.